Hello everyone. This is fourth MCQ. So in the stem of MCQ, 30 weeks male preterm neonates weighing 1.25 kg. Born by spontaneous vaginal delivery as his mother unexpectedly presented with preterm labor. She was also given the beta metasone 12 mg IM 30 minutes before delivery. Newborn at the time of birth had the tachypnea, respiratory rate 78 per minute. Minimal nasal flaring was there. Audible grunting sound was also present. Also had the leg during inspiration in upper chest retraction. Just visible lower chest and diploid retraction at the time of birth. Then he was admitted to the NICU. He was maintaining oxygen saturation of 91 to 93% at room air. Chest X-ray was also done. So this is the image of X-ray. Now in the similar stem, they can ask the many questions. So I will explain one by one. So first question they can ask, what are the respiratory distress severity score? according to the Silverman Anderson score. So according to these points, we have to calculate the score and we have to assess the severity. So options are SAS score either 6, 7, 8 or 9. So how to calculate the SAS score? So in this table, you can see these are the five points upper chest, lower chest retraction, gyphoid retraction, nasal flaring and grunting. So in our patient, in upper chest retraction, patient is having leg on inspiration. In lower chest retraction, these are just visible. Gyphoid retraction also just visible. Nasal flaring also minimal. Grunting sound audible with naked ear. So the total score is 6 1 1 1 1 plus 2 so total scores are 6 so the right answer for this is a option now in the similar stem of the mcq they can ask stem will remain same which one is not the predisposing factor for respiratory distress in this newborn so we know preterm neonate who is having the respiratory distress and with characteristic x-ray changes. This is RDS, respiratory distress syndrome. So what are the predisposing factors we should remember and what are the protective factor for the RDS? So out of these four options, we have to differentiate which is not the predisposing factor. So option A is maternal diabetes it is the predisposing factor gestational hypertension is not the predisposing factor while the rh negative mother and prematurity are the risk factor so the right answer for this mcq is b so we have to remember in next slide i will explain so you have to remember that Whenever they are giving in the stem premature baby with the respiratory distress, that means newborn is suffering from RDS because it is the most common cause of respiratory distress in premature infant. And the predisposing factors are prematurity, whenever there are multiple births, birth asphyxia, LSCS, maternal diabetes and RH negative mother. All are the predisposing factor. While the protective factors are PROM, premature rupture of membrane, IUGR, intrauterine growth retardation, if antenatal steroids given to the mother, gestational hypertension is also the protective factor and maternal heroin use. If mother is addicted to this, then again it is the protective factor. So we have to remember it. Now in the similar MCQ, they can ask, the stem will remain same, which one of the following option is the most important next step in the management of the baby? So read the options. 
start the begin mass ventilation immediately after initial steps of resuscitation so if the baby is having tachypnea respiratory rate 78 per minute begin mass ventilation is indicated whenever baby is having either apnea or gasping respiration not for the tachypnea already respiratory rate is more than normal we should not start the begin mass ventilation so this is the wrong option b option is immediately intubate the baby and keep on lung protective ventilation strategy so in preterm newborn always we have to prefer the non invasive mode of ventilation invasive mode by intubating and keeping the baby on ventilator then prognosis will be worse so this is also the not the right option now the c option is keep on continuous positive airway pressure in delivery room start the cpap even in delivery room and then shift the baby with cpap to the nicu so this is the right option this is the uh, treatment of choice for the preterm newborn with rds so right answer for this is c now see the d option keep the baby on heated humidified high flow nasal cannula at 4 liter per minute hfnc is not the uh, mode of oxygen therapy for the preterm at the time of birth when the newborn is having respiratory distress syndrome so the right answer is c so learning points are use of cpap for stabilization of at risk preterm infant with the rds begin as early as in the delivery room reduce the ventilatory needs now for the similar mcq they can ask what is the radiological finding in the x ray so here in this x ray there are various radiological finding can occur in the rds patients x ray so i will explain in the next slide so this is characteristic white out lung appearance so the right answer for this x ray is d here you can see this is totally white out so the right option is d so what are the various x ray pattern can be seen so reticulo granular pattern when the newborn is having mild rds here you can see some are the granular and reticular patterns are present in both the lung fields another is air bronchogram here you can see the opacity is there but here you can see the air bronchogram visible bronchovascular marking is there these are the opacity present in both the lung fields but bb markings are visible means moderate rds white out appearance as in our x ray you can see both the lung fields are totally white out because of surfactant deficiency so for further reading you can watch all these videos on this channel and also you can see the nnf guidelines on the use of cpap in neonates in which they have clearly mentioned that cpap is the best oxygen modality for the neonates with the preterm rds while the intubation hfnc all are not the choice thank you so much